Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 12. The Winter of the Blue Snow. Part 1. As the weather began to turn cold, Paul felt sure that his bad luck had left him and he began to make great plans as to how he would regain all the time that had been lost. He was quite happy when the thermometer showed a lower mark each succeeding day, and he looked forward with impatience for the snows to begin. When the first snow did come, however, he began to lose his enthusiasm. There was something so strange about the flakes that he was filled with new foreboding as soon as they began to fall. They were a bright blue in color, and once started they fell unceasingly. That winter has always been remembered by loggers as the winter of the blue snow, for never before or after, so far as history shows or the oldest man can remember, has there ever been any other snow of that color. So much of it fell that finally Paul had to let his men down on ropes before they could even find the tops of the tallest trees. And, of course, not much logging could be done. The snow stopped falling at last, and then the weather turned cold. And so cold was it that the men afterwards spoke of it as the year of the two winters, since it was as cold as two winters put together. It was so cold that the men were worse troubled by snow snakes and pesky little frost biters than ever before. Nearly every step they would take out of doors, there would be a snow snake waiting all coiled up and ready to strike. Once it sank its fangs into a person, he was a goner for sure, for he would freeze to death before help could come. The frost biters were not fatal, but they were really an awful nuisance. It certainly was cold that winter, so cold that men's words froze and dropped to the ground as they were spoken. Johnny Inkslinger had to work out a brand new system for interpreting them before the members of the crew could talk to one another, and a little later a special frozen word interpreter had to be imported into the camp. As in every camp, The Big Onion Camp had a few trouble finders who were always kicking about various things. Paul made all these chronic kickers meet in a special fault-finding conference every day and relieve themselves of all their unpleasant criticisms at that time. Of course, their words froze and dropped to the ground as fast as they were spoken, and as nobody could hear them until after they were thawed out, The fault finders never troubled themselves to speak mildly. Paul had all their frozen words gathered up in a big bin, intending to haul such troublesome rubbish far away from camp and bury it. Until the ever-efficient Johnny Inkslinger thought of boxing up the most explosive of all the words and selling them for blasting powder. They were very powerful, too, when a charge of them was set off all at once. One good thing which the cold spell did was to cure all the men in camp of swearing. Whenever a man dropped a cuss word, Paul had it picked up by a special crew for the purpose, labeled with the man's name, and stored away. When spring came and the weather began to get warm, each man that had a bale of cuss words saved up for him had to take them all out and listen to them as they thawed. Some wonderful combinations were heard along about that time, and having to sit back and listen to their full winter's cussing all in one bunch was a most satisfactory method of curing the men of the unpleasant habit of swearing, one may be sure. Brimstone Bill was the worst offender in the camp this way. That was how he earned his name. 
but after spring came that year, he was just about the mildest spoken man in seven states. He had cussed so much during the cold weather that several times he had been nearly covered up and smothered by the frozen words and had to be pulled out from under the heap he had made. When spring came and he had to listen to all of his words as they thawed out, ha! There was some real excitement, most assuredly. He was deaf for three weeks afterwards, and he never did fully recover from the dreadful things he had heard. His experience completely cured him of swearing, however, and ever afterwards, whenever he began to feel the old inclination to say words of such nature, he would relieve his feelings with whistling instead. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.